Okay, we're gonna talk about polyatomic ions, and I'm just gonna give you some tips and tricks um, for how to memorize some of them, or at least when you get a, a periodic table, you can utilize it to give yourself uh, at least some clues. Uh, the first thing we're gonna notice is carbon. It's right here. And then to the right of it is nitrogen. Underneath it is phosphorus. To the right of that is sulfur chlorine and then under that is bromine and iodine and we're just going to kind of form this little stair stepper which includes carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Um, in this case we're also going to look over here and notice that chromium and manganese are together. So we're going to go ahead and take those two as well. So let's go ahead and write those down. You could write it on your periodic table but I'm going to write fresh new ones just so you uh, can see what I do. So we're gonna go ahead and start here with uh, carbon, and then nitrogen, and under that phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and underneath chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And then we're also gonna pay attention to those, one, uh, those ones that were right over here, the chromium and the manganese. Okay, um, to each of these, we're gonna add an oxygen. O, O, O. So we got cono, poso, clo, bro, io, cro, no. And that should be fun to say. And now we're going to go ahead and start assigning charges to these things. I look at them in separate rows. I got one row here, another row here, a row here, here, and here. So essentially I have one, two, three, four, five different rows. And now I'm gonna go ahead and look at charges again. This has two things in this row, so I'm gonna start with a two minus here and a one minus here. This has three things, so I'm gonna start with a three minus, a two minus, a one minus. This BRO only has one, so it's one minus. This IO only has one, it's a one minus. This chromium only has, a, this has two, the chromium in the oxygen and the magnesium in the oxygen, or manganese, excuse me, in the oxygen. So this is a two minus and then a one minus. Now we have all the charges set out. Um, now we just have to memorize the following. That all of them are three, with the exception of P, S, Cr, and Mn. So three, 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 three. And then the P and the S and the CR and the MN are four, 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 four. Um, one student said that they remember, memorized that it's this because of the PlayStation 4, PS4. So like, okay, this has PS, so it's gonna be PS, and these ones are gonna be four. And then the chromium and the manganese as well. So what these are, are the eights. This is carbonate. This is nitrate, this is phosphate, sulfate, chlorate, bromate, iodate, chromate, and this is actually called Per manganate, a little different. So, carbonate, nitrate, phosphate, sulfate, chlorate, bromate, iodate, chromate, and per manganate. Why per manganate? Manganate isn't something you come across too often. Um, this is the most common one, and that's why we're going to go ahead and memorize it right now. All right, now let's go ahead and do a couple of variations from these things. If I want to change it from eight to eight. So for example, nitrate is NO3 with a negative charge. If I want to change it from nitrate to nitrite, I simply reduce the number of oxygen by one. Everything else stays the same. So instead of NO3 with a negative one charge, it becomes NO2 with a negative one charge. And this works for every single one of these. So you go from an eight to an eight, you simply 
change the number of oxygens. And I can take phosphate and make it phosphite by changing that four to a three, and now it's phosphite. And that works with every single one of these, turning it to an ite. Now, um, another situation uh, you might encounter is using per and hypo. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So for example, chlorate is ClO3 with a negative one charge. Chlorite is ClO2 with a negative one charge because again, going from eight to eight, all we do is reduce the number of oxygen by one, everything else stays the same. But then we come across something else. Hypo means less, so hypo chloride would be even one less chloride, or one less oxygen, excuse me. So it'd be ClO minus. The opposite of hypo is hyper, but they shorten it to per. So per chlorate is simply ClO4 negative. It's got one more oxygen than chlorate did. Per chlorate, the most, chlorate, three, chlorite, two, hypochlorite, just one. Finally, we come across another thing that we'll, we'll encounter, and that would be um, hydrogen-containing ionic compounds, so for example, poly or polyatomic ions. So for example, uh, phosphate is PO4 with a three minus charge. But if we want to make it hydrogens of phosphate, Essentially what we're doing is we're going to add an H plus to this phosphate. So it's going to be H plus and a phosphate, which will combine and be HPO4, but now a plus charge and a three minus charge will become a two minus charge. So hydrogen phosphate is HPO4 with a two minus charge. So if I asked you to give me the compound for sodium, hydrogen phosphate, Well, you know sodium is Na+, plus and, phos and hydrogen phosphate is HPO4 with a two minus charge. The only question is how many of each do you need to cancel them out? Well, you just need two sodiums to cancel out the charges, because so, this would give you a two plus. This is the two minus, and Na2HPO4 is your answer. Finally, you might have something like dihydrogen phosphate. which is as simple as it sounds. Phosphate, again, is PO4 with three minus charge. Dihydrogen, now what you're doing is you're adding two H pluses. So essentially, it's gonna be H2, PO4, and now the charge is just gonna be simply negative because we got a three minus and we're adding two positives to it. Our overall uh, resulting charge is negative one. And that is all.